Good morning. It's time for Sunday School again. Uh, let's start by reading the prior request. Uh, remember, we have a lot of folks that have, have special needs, and uh, I guess we all just need a little encouragement during these, these times. But it's, it is kind of exciting. We're going to get to be back in the service this morning for the worship service anyway. So we're thankful for that. Let's continue to pray about the about the church and the, the, uh, the message that goes out in our ministries. I want to pray for our essential workers. Uh, our prayer list contains Alyssa Silts, Slivers, Troy Cutshaw, Billy Joe McCamey, Maynard Curtis had a stroke. Pray for his wife, Linda, also. Charlotte White, recovering from cataract surgery, and Graves uh, from cataract surgery. The family of Charlie, Charles, Charles C. Niece, Josh, that's Josh and April Niece's grandmother and preacher Lynn Niece's mother. Edna Cooper, Shirley Voshi, uh, Junior Marshall, Barbara Scott, David McKee's mother, Dakota Sams, Sue Barnett, Bob Young, Shane Benfield, James Willis, Joy Boudreau, uh, Catherine Edwards, Tammy Mitchell, William Carter, Nancy Turner, Carl Eastead, Reba Silvers, uh, Maxine Baldwin, Tommy and Evelyn Kelly, Hank and Mildred Jordan, Alan and Sherry Sherman, and Bobby Edwards. So let's continue to remember these in prayer. And uh, let's go to Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer now. Our Heavenly Father, we do pray on behalf of all of these prayer requests that have been mentioned, the names have been mentioned, Lord, and we know that you know the circumstances in each one. We pray your deliverance and your guidance and ask, Lord, that you would just intercede in their behalf. We pray for the service today. We pray, Lord, that you'll bless each one as they're able to come back in uh, to this service this morning and pray that you'll bless Brother Tim with the message. Pray that you'll bind us together in your love and help us, Lord, to feel your presence about us. We pray for the Sunday school lesson. Pray that you will touch our hearts and lives, Lord, with your presence and your word. And Lord, that you'll strengthen us to the task that lies ahead for us. We pray uh, again, Lord, that you'll just bless our, our worship service today and be with each family, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Sunday school lesson today is, is still from Genesis. And the title of the lesson today is Red, Yellow, Black, and White. And everybody remembers that little song. Uh, they're all precious in Jesus' sight, aren't they? And so we're going to be looking some more in, in Genesis. And and uh, I think last week we mentioned verse uh, the third chapter of Genesis, uh, verse 20, that uh, when Adam named his wife Eve, that the meaning of that name meant that she was the mother of all living. So our lesson today uh, we're, we're talking about the different races or how the, how the separation of uh, nations and stuff began. And uh, so we want to look at this a little bit. And uh, our lesson uh, begins with that verse in, in uh, Genesis 3, verse 20. And the first point of the lesson is every person is the offspring of the first man and first woman. Genesis gives us a clear account of the origin of human beings. And we know according to the book of Genesis, that everybody, that, that the creation, man and woman, he made them male and female, Adam and Eve were the first uh, man and woman, and everybody else descended from them. The human race uh, began with them, and, and everybody has can be traced back to those two original parents. And so one race created by God who bears his image. Each, each person that's born is born with a, it, 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 with, it bears the image of God. And also then each person that's born is marked by the fall of man with a sin nature. And that's where the problem comes in. So we need to, we need to look at every individual, every human being as, a cre as created in the image of of God and loved by Him, so they, we need to we need to extend His love. Jesus uh, taught that we were to love one another as He loved us. So every every individual being created 
in the image of God and loved by Him. But we see that then the, all the genetic information, all we talk about the gene pool, we talk about the the the, thing, the character traits and things that are passed to us. Well, understand that originally all of those were present in Adam and Eve. But what happened was that uh, as the as time went on, those uh, those genetic influences got well we got separated. We'll talk about that in a minute. But got separated out, and so they were narrowed down. That's why we have the the kind of the cultures and things that we have now. But God's love and salvation is offered to all of us in the sacrifice of His Son. Sin, the sin nature passed to mankind and caused all kinds of problems. We see that in the, in the sixth chapter of the book of Genesis, just ten generations from the fall, uh, from, well, from Adam and Eve, and the fall of man in the Garden of Eden, we find that God already has come to the place where He's decided uh, that if they got so wicked that he's going to destroy it. We, we all know about the great flood and the, and the old world was destroyed. And, uh, but, uh, but the scripture tells us in the, in the 11th chapter of the book of Genesis that, uh, or in the 6th chapter of the book of Genesis, that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And so we have a new, uh, a new uh, bloodline or a new uh, generation starting from Noah and his sons so that everybody living today it comes from those from Noah and his sons and uh, so all of our families can be traced back to that one family still which was traced back all the way back to Adam also and when the Lord decided to destroy a uh, man whom I created I think verse 7 in the Genesis 6 says that God said, I will destroy man whom I have created from, from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. The wickedness had already gotten so bad because of the sin nature and because of the fall of man, but Noah found grace. And so we find that after the flood, Noah and his sons come off of the, uh, the uh, ark, and uh, they began again with the same commandment of the Lord is to, to spread out and fill the earth. And then when we come to Genesis chapter 11, we find that they came uh, into the land of people. The first, the first verse of the 11th chapter of Genesis begins out with the people were of one language. And they came to the plain of Shinar. And there they decided to build a city. And they decided to build a tower. And which was not what God had commanded them to do. And we see that sin nature working in mankind still at this point, causing them to do what they wanted to do and to follow their decision making process and their ideas. And they were all together, and which was a good thing in, in that sense. But when they, when they followed their own desires instead of the, the will of God and God's plan for them, then that led to, that was again disobedience, and God uh, came down and confused their languages and caused them to be spread uh, to, due to their rebellious hearts and their desire and intent to do their will instead of God's. God confused the languages and causing them to separate into various groups and then move away from one another, settling in different parts of the world. So we see how the different cultures and the different nations began to be formed as those folks spread out with, with their language group. Well, they, they limited the gene pool to that group of people. And then they also went into areas of the world that the, the climate and, and the areas they adapted to their surroundings and stuff. And so they generated different cultures and different ways of life and different attitudes and different desires and people uh, where they were communicating with their own group, uh, they became they became nations, and they had their own ideas about how things were, and they basically it led to it led to different traditions, ways of life, culture, and even physical characteristics are affected in that. So we have the different we have the different uh, uh, body types and different colors and the different uh, 
uh, facial features and all these things that you can see in different. Uh, it all began right there at the confusion of the languages and the separation of the people. And so uh, we need to understand then that the different cultures and physical traits that developed by, by these limited, by the limitation of the genetics into those certain groups and, and environmental in influences still trace back to Adam and Eve. Uh, they were just limited so that there wasn't a big, big variety and things spread out. And so we want to understand then that that when we come to uh, when we come to the, the the language barriers and people groups, we need to understand then that that we need to still see people in all of these different groups. We need to recognize them as part of one race, and we need to still recognize that they're all created by God and bear His image, even though uh, they have been involved in the sin nature and sin culture for so long and, and the disregard of the different disregard for God's will and God's direction led to cultural choices, selfish pride and sin, sinful practice and it brought about further separation and even began to lead to wars and fighting among the different groups and the different and, and even we find that it, it even brought forth uh, the differences when this group got together with that group and things that there was there was animosity between them there was fighting and things going on and so we want to understand that unbiblical perspectives cause division and conflict and scriptural truth brings forgiveness and generates love for mankind we need to understand that man was created in the image of God but he bore uh, the, 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 in the fall of man, he bore the sin nature, and sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. We need to understand that most people have not grounded their worldview in the truth of Scripture. Uh, they follow the, the practice of worldly culture and worldly ideas and worldly desires and, and, and the desire to, to manifest themselves like at the Tower of Babel. They wanted to build a tower that reached up to heaven. They wanted to make a name for themselves. And the scripture said that they were with one language and, and they all had one purpose. And when God came down and looked at it and he said, he said, the people are one and this is what they decide to do. So he separated them. And in that separation then we see where that's all taken to. Well, we have a little bit of, uh, we, well, understand that when evil exists, evil exists in the world because sin first exists in the heart of mankind. And in sin, that takes us on those evil roads and those evil desires surface and cause all kinds of problems and separation and division. But when, uh, in, our, in our more modern history, we want to look at the United States and, and the settling of America. When the immigrants came here, they came from all nations. We have the Statue of Liberty that stands as a, as a monument to the fact that this nation was made up of people from all different cultures and all different kinds of race. And when they came together in this country, uh, we see that we, we get a glimpse of what is possible when the people are one, when they're working for a common cause, when they have the same idea. And they, they, they came here, a lot of them came because of the, the abuse and, 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 and the things that were being done to them or, or the things they were having to endure in the areas where they were. And they came here with the hope of something fresh and something new. And they built that. And, and this nation became one of the greatest nations to have ever been, I guess, and have accomplished, I guess, most everything uh, that we could, we could look at, you know, and say that it's one of the greatest nations, I guess, even now. But we still see that sin nature rearing its head, even in the American experience. And the cultures begin to divide, and they begin to fight against themselves, and they begin to separate again. And we see that same thing that as the, the immigrants moving to America, and we see that picture of hope and and. and, and uh, communication and getting along together and what can be accomplished but then pride, prejudice and selfishness 
And we see that play it out in, even in our political parties in the day that we live, that that's brought us or bringing us to a separation and a division, even to new levels of corruption. And so we see what the sin nature does for us. So we want to remember that every human being was made in the image of God. Amen. And we bear that image. And we have the opportunity for salvation through His Son, Jesus Christ. And God is calling us to His Son to enter the kingdom of God, where the righteous kingdom of God, where we have, where we have things in common, where we have the same... Uh, ideas and we have the same hopes together and so that sets aside all the individualism and all the cultural differences and things and we become uh, that one that one group again and that's the church in our day we have an opportunity in the church today to worship the lord jesus christ to accept uh, our salvation given through his sacrifice on the cross and to come together as one group of people in the kingdom of God that loves the world around us and wants to reach them with the gospel. In Adam, all have sinned. But in Christ, the last Adam, we have access to forgiveness of sin and life everlasting. Sin always brings division and confusion and corruption. But in Christ, we're offered peace and unity in the kingdom of righteousness and the kingdom of God. And that's where we want to put our focus. That's where we want to live. That's what we want to hold on to. And that's where we want to put our efforts in reaching the rest of the world. We don't want to look at folks as, as somebody that we despise and somebody that, we, uh, that we're uh, at, at enmity against or that we have conflicts with. We want to look at them as a person that God created and that God loves and that God is offering them salvation. And we want to extend the hand of friendship and the message of the gospel to them in every opportunity that we have. And the church is the place where the world comes together. At the foot of the cross, we bow in, 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 in humble adoration to the Son and that sacrifice that He's given for us. And we lift ourselves in peace and harmony in the love of God and we extend that love to the others around us yeah. and we have the hope of His appearing. We have the promise of His coming yeah. and we're looking and longing for the day when we can have that one unity together yeah. in His love yeah. forever. Yeah. And that's our hope. And that's what the church is working for. And that's what each of us should have in our mind when we see different things going on in the world. We've got presidential elections coming up. We see all the controversy and all the spiteful things and all the things that are taking place. And we see the corruption, but in the church, we see the promise. Hey. Sure, there may be even conflicts in church sometimes because we have that sin nature and it rears its head sometimes. But when we look at church and see Jesus Christ, it gives us that peace and that hope and settles us in the promises of God that we can hold on to Him for eternity. Amen. And that's where our hope lies, and we're looking forward to that, and we're longing for that. So we understand when we look at everybody, if they're a person made in the image of God and has inherited a fallen nature, and that nature has caused them to need a Savior, and we have the Savior that's being offered to them. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank You, Lord, that You've given us the knowledge of Your Son, that You've opened Your Scripture, Lord, to us, and that You've presented it, Lord, in the preaching and, and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit moving on godly men. We pray, Lord, that You'll help us to hold to that and help us let Your light shine in our everyday lives to touch the lives of those around us. Give us strength, Lord, uh, to accomplish your purpose. Help us to be united, Lord, with those that love you uh, to the fulfilling of your will. And we pray, Lord, that you'll bless the church, bless today as we come back into a, a, a worship service, Lord, and gather together, even though we're still separated uh, to somewhat. We thank you, Lord, that we can be together and that we can praise you for who you are, for what you've done and what you're doing 
in our lives and even in our day. And thank you, Lord, for the promise of your coming, for the promise, Lord, of everlasting peace and everlasting life in you and in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.